I finally figured out this art. That little red thing in his hand, he's stealing hopes and dreams. Welcome back to the Actory Magic Channel. I'm Steve, the Actory. Today we are talking about the absolute worst cards in the Commander format. These are the toxic of toxic cards for our community. I love them all, but they're awful at the same time. Uh, before we get into all that, I wanna let you know we're sponsored today by MTG On Command. They make these really cool 3D printed deck boxes and you get to show off your Commander. I really, really like the um, the 3D prints they got going on. They're also looking at a future with a, uh, more cool stuff coming on the horizons. You get your Commander there like that. You can drop her on the table. Oh, really quick, I wanna say thank you to my patrons. I've got Austin, Gabby, Neebs, and Cade. Thank you so much for being a part of this journey with me. I appreciate you guys. Link in the description below if you wanna go and support me on Patreon as well. Back to the video. All right, without further ado, shall we get into the talkie talk? All right, now this is my opinion, of course, and I'm not calling for the ban of any of these. Except for maybe number one. <laughs> Let us talk about it. So the reason why I think that these are just awful cards is because I think that we want to promote healthy environment, which doesn't always mean the I'm gonna win environment. Okay, so healthy meaning that we are trying to promote people enjoying the game, even though they may lose, that they're still going to enjoy the time that they spend. And some of these things, I don't think they really add to the fun of the, the game or the um, the operation of the game. So one of these, I don't know that I necessarily think. Anyway, here's the honorable mention. Let's talk about it. Mana Crypt. Okay, so this is an honorable mention because I think mostly my problem with it is the fact that it's a nearly $200 card, but it's not exactly that either because two mana on turn one Extra, so three mana on turn one, is really, really disgustingly good. And it really breaks the turn order, uh, like, symmetry. So breaking that symmetry, meaning I am on turn three, everybody else is starting on turn one, that's rough. But I don't think that this card deserves a ban by any means. I think it'd be nice as if it was cheaper. That would be nice. Kind of more like, I don't know, maybe like a Smothering Tide kind of level. Not a $200 card. But... <sighs> I don't know. I think the format might be healthier without it. Might. Might. Next up, this is the way that I would take care of these mana crypts that are running rampant in your neighborhood. I would be running me some Collector Oops and Stunning Silence. Actually, you know what? A lot of my answers are uh, taxes effects. I love taxes. I know that everybody else is going to hate me for saying that, but taxes, I think, are the answer to making the games more fair. Collector Oof. Active bit. Activated abilities of artifacts can't be activated. Heck yeah. Stony Silence is the exact same thing, but instead it's a two-drop enchantment instead of a two-drop creature. These are awesome. Now, next up we have POW, Gaia's Cradle. Okay, so there's no hoops to jump through on this card. You just play it and you tap it for one green mana of each for each creature you control. Uh, this is disgusting. It really, really is. And the um, other card, the equivalent, I forget what the card is called. It has a like a mechanic where you have to like go through some hoops to make it turn on to be this kind of busted. But it, let me know in the comments what the card is that I'm talking about. You know the one that's an enchantment that comes in? Uh, anyway, um, but I think that to play fair magic, and this is breaking all kinds of things, because you can tap this one land for infinite mana if you have infinite creatures, which is gross, okay? I think you should be think running things like Damping Sphere and Alpine Moon, or Blood Moon, if you're into that, okay? Dampening Sphere, it says, if a land is tapped for two or more mana, it produces one colorless instead of any other type or amount. Heck yeah. Each player, uh, each spell a player casts costs one more to cast for each other spell that player has cast this turn. This shuts off so many decks. It's so unbelievably powerful um then alpine moon just turns their um their land into basically a command tower uh it says in his battlefield uh, choose a non-basic land, uh, land card name if they let it come into play that card's just shut off they don't get to respond to it as soon as the land enter, or sorry alpine moon enters the battlefield lands your opponent's control with the chosen name lose all land types and abilities they gain tap add one man of any color so 
It does mana fix, but it does shut off Gaia's Cradle. It shuts off Cabal Coffers. It shuts off of, um, uh, what do you call it? What's that one with Karma? Uh, Herborg. <laughs> it shuts off Herborg. It's fantastic. I also recommend playing some Blood Moon or some Contamination against this stuff. Non-basic lands or mountains or Contamination. It says whenever a land is tapped for mana, it produces one black instead of its normal type and amount. Mwah! So good. Contamination, you have to sack a creature your upkeep. But it is so powerful. Um, play some uh, Bitter Blossom. Mm. <laughs> anyway, next up we have Strip Mine. You should probably be running Strip Mine. Even if it's just a proxy that says Strip Mine, destroy target, land. It is so powerful. If you can squeeze a Strip Mine into your deck, you should be. Any one mana, or, or sorry, one color or two color decks should probably be running Strip Mine or some kind of equivalent thereof. Next up, we have Ristic Study. Ristic Study is a great card. It's an amazing card. It's just, it's so tedious to say, are you going to pay one for that? Are you going to pay one for that? Are you going to pay one for that? It just makes the conversation just, oh my goodness. Like, it's it's like that friend in the corner of the room is like, hey man, did you, did you get my text? We're sitting in the room together. Just talk to me. No, but did you get my text? No, I'm talking to you. Anyway, so Ristic Study is pretty annoying. I think that it should be, um, I don't know. I think that I think that this would be better costed at four mana if we're in a perfect wear world. It would be a four mana card, but since it's a three mana card, it's such a good just, I'm gonna slam this. Like if you have a mana crypt and uh, island in this and your opening hand, you're just gonna win the game. I just, I mean like if this is unanswered, turn one, oh, sorry, uh, yeah, turn one, this is just gonna win you the game. It's so good. Uh, I suggest everybody's running Nature's Claim or Feed the Swarm if you don't have access to it, like green or white. Um, you need to be running some way of removing enchantments. I mean, Feed the Swarm, I think we need another copy, like another version of Feed the Swarm in black, or maybe some kind of blue interaction. Uh, but then that makes blue and black too powerful. Eh, I don't know. But I also want to mention to my listeners at home that Tribute to the Wild is such a good asymmetric card. You're spending one card and usually getting three cards gone. You're either going to hit a mana rock for somebody, you're going to hit a Ristic Study, you're going to hit a, um, uh, what do you call it, Mystic Remora. Um, this is such a powerful card. It says each opponent sacrifices an artifact or an enchantment. If it happens to be their only enchantment, only artifact, this is such a good card. And it puts a hurting on anybody. It is a three for one, almost guaranteed every time you cast it. It's so powerful. And people don't play cards that they don't want to keep in play. Okay, that's not true. They usually want to keep their artifacts and enchantments. Just saying. Okay, next up, I think this is the fun killer of fun killers, Teferi. So Teferi, Time Raveler. The reason why I think this card is bad for the format is because it takes out interaction. That's the huge defining part of magic as compared to say like, I don't know, Hearthstone, where you can't interact on each other's turns as much. This turns us into Hearthstone. Now, the reason I say that is because I want my opponents to be able to react to what my other opponents are doing. Because if I play Teferi, then I'm shutting out my other opponents from being able to deal with whatever my other opponents are doing. Because I may not have the answer in hand to them finishing their combo, but he might, or she might, but now I've just shut that off. It's just not any good. I mean, it's just the part that says each opponent can only cast one a spell anytime they can cast a sorcery. Uh, that's so rough, man. I mean, it's not Grand Abolisher. Grand Abolisher's great. It says um, players can't activate abilities or cast spells on your turn. That's fantastic, but it's asymmetric. Now, here's what I recommend you run in, like, to counteract the three. I say you run some Ravnica at War. Exile all multicolored permanents. That's a lot of commanders. Or Pure and Simple, which it says destroy target multicolored permanent. Or it also has the option of destroying all auras and equipments, which is really, really common in a lot of metas where people are running those really bananas, like Voltron style decks. Okay? I also like Bone Shards and Faithful Absence. Those are just good cards. Um, bone Shards for one mana, sac or discard a card, destroy target creature, or Planeswalker. Or Planeswalker. So good. Faithful Absence it says destroy target creature or Planeswalker. It's controller investigates. So they get a clue. They can sack it and draw a card. Oh well. I dealt with the really heinous part right over there. Uh, next up, the one of the worst cards for the format, 
because it just wins. It just wins, kind of. Anyway, I think Cyclonic Rift could eat a ban and make the format... I don't know. I actually kind of think that would make the format a worse place. It's still an awful card to play against. It's a really amazing card, but Cyclonic Rift, I think it just, if you resolve a Cyclonic Rift, you're going to win. Like if you resolve it, you should be winning on your, on like your upkeep, you know? It says return target online permanent you control, uh, you don't control to its owner's hand or for seven it overloads and it returns all non-land permits you don't control to their owner's hands. That's all mana rocks, that's all creatures, enchantments, artifacts, all that stuff back to their hand. They reset, they have to rebuild their board. Whereas you untap and you should, you should. If you play this card, you should win. Um, I think you should be running things like Pyroblast and Dispel. Like, I think the, both of these cards are really good. Pyroblast just shoots a Teferi. It just shoots a Kess. It just shoots a Nekusar. It's just so good. And Dispel just, it counters so much. So much. Dispel does such heavy lifting for a common. Next up, I think we also should be, like, running things like Eerie Interlude and Teferi's Protection. Eerie Interlude, uh, like, exiles your creatures until any end of turn. So after Cyclonic Rift resolves you get your creatures back and now you're gonna beat to death the person who just psych rift the board hopefully <laughs> tefri's protection until your next turn your life total can't change you get protection from all from everything all permits you control phase out exile tefri's protection both bananas there's a new one called guardian of the faith which is a creature that basically does a tefri's protection just for your creatures it's really awesome i'm gonna start running that in my cdh deck next up we have march of swirling mists as an additional cost to cast this spell, you may exile any number of blue cards from your hand. This spell costs two less to cast for each card exiled this way. Up to X target creatures phase out. Yes, please. Thank you. Or blow up all islands. <laughs> Tsunami. Mm. <laughs> I love it. Or uh, boil is fantastic. I love it. Some choke. Mm. All right. Next up, we also have Deuce of the Falling Leaf. If you really want people to only play stuff on their own turn, Keep it to yourself, homie. Keep your interaction to yourself. But Dosen is also kind of guilty of this. But Dosen's symmetric. So, like, it hurts yourself. So, like, it's not... It's more fair than Tefri. But it's still... It kind of does the same thing Tefri does. Anyway. But the number one worst offender on this list, the thing I think should go tomorrow in a heartbeat, have no arguments about... Oh, my goodness. Thassa's Oracle. Why are you still in the format? Why? Why? Why is this card legal? Okay, it's a two drop. It says, enters the battlefield, look at the top X cards of your library, where X is your devotion to blue, put one up to one on top of your library, and the rest in the bottom of your library in a random order. If X is greater than or equal to the number of cards in your library, you win the game on a two drop? Who thought this was fair? Why? Why did they print this card? <laughs> okay, so... Uh, I really think that everybody should find a way to squeeze in at least one copy of Torpor Orb or Hushbringer. Unless it completely shuts down what you're doing in your deck. These are amazing. It says creatures entering the battlefield don't cause abilities to trigger. Go away, Mrs. Thassa's Oracle. Stop your shenanigans because at instant speed they're going to resolve that Tainted Pact or that uh, demonic consultation, and then they're just gonna win on the stack, and you don't have, people aren't playing Stifle, they should probably play, be playing Stifle, or at least um, Tail's End, Tail's End is really good, kind of as a, a triggered ability, activated ability, or a, um, or a legendary creature. Tails End's pretty sweet in this format, I think. But anyway, uh, that's my thoughts, those are my comments about what's the most toxic crap in the uh, commander format. I'm not just talking about CDH. I'm talking about all of them. Because I've seen people try and say that Thassa's Oracle is fine in com casual. And I'm like, you are higher than a kite. <laughs> all right. Thank you so much, MTG on Command, for your sponsorship. You guys are so great. I love their deck boxes. They're constantly improving. And they've done such a good job with their workmanship and their craftsmanship in the time that I've been with them. They're a brand new company. They're really great. I love them to death. They got that little magnet on there. Oh, where is it? Yeah, there you go. Anyway, so um, 
I love you guys. I couldn't do this without you. Oh, link in the description below for my Patreon. If you have any interest in that, I would love your support over there. Great. Um, we got doing custom made proxies. We're doing uh, giveaways and all that kinds of fun stuff. Love you guys. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Hit my button. <laughs> yes, hello. I would like people not to be able to play the game Magic the Gathering. Yes, we did start playing a game, but I don't want them to play. I want to play, but I don't want them to.